Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Randall Sorrells, ACS 880 Marketing Manager for ABB Drives. And I'm Bill Nyback, Senior Application Engineer on the industrial side. If this video becomes useful to you, please make sure you hit that like button. Also, if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell, you'll be notified the next time that we come out with a useful training video. In this video, we are going to demonstrate what it takes on the ACS 880 to move the ZMU memory module from one drive to the other and get the new drive up and going. So again, this ZMU is the memory module that contains the parameterization as well as the firmware, as well as the motor setup data, everything that you need for a fully functional drive. So what we will do is we will uh, assume that this drive has become non-functional and even though this drive has a comms card on it communicating back to a PLC getting its start-stop speed commands we're going to move the comms card over to the new drive we're going to remove the uh, memory module show you where it's at uh, and also show you how to remove it and then move it to the new one how to boot it up and what it looks like uh, both if you take the keypad from the old drive to the new drive, but also in the latter part of the video, keep keeping the new keypad on there and showing you what it looks like as the drive and ZMU is loading the language to the keypad. So this is available on the 880, and it's a great feature that we have available from three-quarter horse up to our catalog um, 3,300 horsepower drives, and so stay tuned. Here. So I'm here with uh, Bill Nyback, Senior Application Engineer here at ABB. So Bill, if you don't mind, run us through the process of how to change out a ZMU, and in this case we're doing it on a ZCU 12 board. Correct. Yep, so first what we'll do is we'll just show you that the drive runs and is controlled by this PLC. So I'll give it a start command, and you can see the drive ramps up. It uh, goes up to full speed, no issues, so we'll go ahead and stop that drive for now. Um, we're going to want to power the drive down, so I'll power it off. So the first thing we're going to want to do is move this cradle up out of the way. So kind of grab the bottom of it and give it a gentle tug. It should pull up, and then you can push it up and out of the way. So as you can see, this is the older style control board, so that ZMU is held in with a screw. So we need to remove this screw to get this ZMU out. So I'll unscrew this. Set the screw aside, give it the memory module a gentle pull, it should pull out. You can see there's the circuit board uh, that gets inserted into the control board. So I'll set that down over here next to our new drive. Um, on the new drive, do the same thing. We're going to want to pull the cradle out of the way. So I'm just going to give it a gentle tug again and push it up and out of the way. Um, this is the newer style control board. As you can see, there's no screw over here or anything that we need to remove. There's a tab that can, needs to be popped out. So you just kind of pull that back, and that allows the ZMU to be pulled out. And we can set that aside. And we can put the new ZMU in. So I'll just gen slot that in there, push it in. And then you want to make sure you push this tab down again so that the ZMU is locked in. After that, we want to remove the COM module. So first thing you want to do here is remove the grounding screw. So I'll loosen that up. Make sure that's loosened up all the way. The next thing you're going to want to do is this red tab. You're going to want to make sure this gets pulled out. So you generally should be able to just pop it up. In the case where it doesn't pop up or if it's a little bit tight, you can take a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry that back. So once that's open, we can kind of wiggle this gently and the module should pull out can grab it, put it into the new drive. So you want to make sure you put this module back into the slot that it came from as everything is programmed inside the ZMU to make sure that it's set up for the proper slot. So if it says that it's coming from slot 3, you put it back in slot 3. Correct. So I'll line up my, my pins and push this down. You hear it snap in. You want to secure this red tab, push that down so that the module can't go anywhere. And then we want to make sure that we tighten that ground screw up again. 
So it's pretty important to get that ground screw tight. Yeah, so the ground screw is very important because it does ground to the network, uh, making sure there's no noise or anything that gets imp implemented into your network and onto your cable. Okay, so both for grounding but also for... For securing. It's much securing. more secure now that this, very this good. is in there. Yep. So uh, the next thing we want to do, we can lower this down, the cradle back, and snap that down. Um, it's also a good practice if you want to pull the keypad out, um, it can save you a little bit of time. On the old drive, we can remove the keypad on the new one, set it aside, and take this keypad out of the old one and move it over. It just kind of snaps in here. Um, what that does is it doesn't have to load the language file or anything up to the keypad if you do swap the keypad from the other one. But if you if you do, it only takes a, like a less than a minute to do. So now that this is all in, everything's plugged in, we can go ahead and power this drive up. And as the drive powers up, it's going to read the information from the ZMU, uh, detect the COM module, and, and boot the control board. Once the control board is booted up and the communication module is online, then we can go ahead and uh, try to run this thing and show you that everything is functioning and good to go. So once that bottom light stops flashing, we're communicating. I'll push the start button on the HMI. You can see the drive ramps up, uh, goes to speed, goes to the commanded reference. Everything is good to go, ready to go, and running. So the drive's communicating and that's pretty much it. So we'll power the drive up. As you can see, it takes a couple seconds here for the control board to boot. It's gonna read the data from that ZMU. And what's gonna say here, there's two ways of doing this. We could have swapped the keypad over. In our case, we didn't. We're gonna use the keypad that's in here. You want to basically select which drive you're connecting to because it's got to read some data up to the keypad to know that you're grabbing that information. So we'll say select on the 880. It's just going to gather some quick data out of the drive. It can take a couple seconds here. It's loading some language files and some information out of the keypad. Now, like I said, the other way we could have done it if we swap the keypad over directly with it, we wouldn't have to go through this extra step in that case. It would already be done, but you can see it's not too long. So it drives up and running. You see there's no faults or anything. I can go back over to the HMI screen and I can start the drive. You can see the drive runs. I'm controlling following speed reference. It's as simple as that. I hope this video was beneficial to you. We appreciate you tuning in, and if you have any questions, make sure you reach out to ABB or one of our authorized channel partners. And as a reminder, if this was a useful video to you, please hit the like button, and then if you subscribe and hit the bell, you'll be notified the next time we come out with a video. Thank you.